Um, such a great series, and I'm so glad that it's being shown on Netflix because I think it's so important. You, but before the series, you did another series. Um, I was wondering if we could touch on that a little bit. Okay, All right. interesting question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I made a series called Black is New Black, um, and really it was getting together a lot of very uh, British and black uh, successful people um, across the across many different genres. So artists, sports people, business people, people in medicine, people in law. Um, because um, there is this thing, we, we, we suffer with the same thing in the West. Uh, the perception uh, or the perceptions or lack of perception of black people and the ability that we have, um, not just in the arts, but across the board. So in England, um, there was a lot of media talk about uh, black people being a failing group. Mm. And, um, but when I looked around me, I saw many people who were brilliant uh, and I didn't see us as a failing group. I saw one section of our community that might be failing as every section of every community you have different people that fail for Absolutely. whatever reason yeah. Yeah. it's just part and parcel of the of the human condition I, I what I wanted to show was regardless whether black white Asian whatever you are that um, it didn't matter what your background was that anyone any child in the United Kingdom or in the United States um, could achieve anything they wanted, yeah, as long as they believed they could and they were given the tools to do so. So that's why I created Black is a New Black. Yeah, it's so yeah. important too, just capturing, capturing those people, capturing history, as you do in this series as well. Yeah, and yeah, and in this series, I felt that it was really important to do the same thing because, you know, we have um, it. It's a testament. It's a. It's a marker. Um, to to say, look, the, today this is what's happening and these are the people that, that made this journey. These are the people that have uh, left us this legacy uh, and, and we should celebrate them. We should celebrate them as artists. We should ce celebrate them as, uh, as human beings that we admire. So I photographed everyone uh, that, that, uh, that I interviewed as well um, as in the last project. And um, it's just, again, these things take on a huge significance because, you know, in the space of making this in two years, uh, we've already lost two of those people in yeah. Diane Carroll uh, and John Singleton. Um, so I feel honored that, you know, I've made these portraits of them, but also I feel honored to have had such uh, an in-depth interview with with you know t two such leading lights of the of the industry yeah i mean john singleton like it's heartbreaking because no one expected it he was so young when he passed um and i forget when i was watching for a second like oh my god he he really did pass but just to have captured that and the, and the interviews are so in-depth and even him talking about boys of the hood and because of Spike Lee, that's why he had, he wanted to make it. It's just, I think, such a treasure that we have now. Well, it, well it's just the brilliance. I mean, the, the legacy of John Singleton is that it gave me the strength to start writing my own script. I would never have written or start, I would never believe that I had the ability to write a script had I had not met John Singleton, for John mm -hmm. Singleton to say to me, write your script. I love that. I mean... That's an, that just like touches my heart, and I think that's why this series is so important, um, just for capturing the, those moments, um, and of course the history because I, I love film. I'm like obsessed with it, and I think it's so important to see, to look at our history, to see where we are now and why we are here. And it's so I think nowadays people forget they, they, we have a tendency not to think about kind of the past too much, but it's so important and it's it's so detrimental that we do. Um, so I thank you for making it, first of all, because um, you know, like Harry Belafonte, like these are stories that people need to remember, especially I think a younger generation. Well, I, I, you know, one of the reasons why I 
I mean, I, I keep saying that I, I made this documentary out of frustration. I made it out of, I mean, there were several frustrations. I think the biggest one being that uh, these are artists um, who are, you know, it's like Spike Lee is, uh, you know, he loves Italian cinema. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a great fan of Fellini and Rossellini and all these people. Oh, <laughs> and, you know, it's like, so when you break it down, you know, it's like you cannot say that, to say that he is a black director is to put him in a box which, which does not describe his love, his passion and his knowledge of, of this industry and this art form. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, that, that would be wrong. Well, in the series too, they talk about his love of the old MGM musicals, of course, yeah. and I, I'm so glad that that is explored because I think a lot of times people do all the time pigeonhole directors, actors, whatever into like a very well. The, in kind of the second episode, was, it's called "Black Is Not a Genre." It's very yeah. kind of in its name tells you a little but, bit. But going going back to the MGM cinema thing, you know, it's like. Ernest Dickerson, who is a great filmmaker himself and an amazing cinematographer, you know, just that observation that at that time, you know, a film like Flashdance was, was doing close-ups of the hands and the feet, but they, you know, shot it wide so that you could actually see the figures dancing across the screen as they did back in the day with, you know, when they had one camera on set uh, and filmed those old MGM movies. You know, and, that, and that's that's a particular observation of someone who is very much into the artistry of filmmaking. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's I'm so glad they show that scene too because it's such a beautiful scene. And then you you're like, oh yeah, it is. It's like the old musicals and Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire and the full. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, but it, what was incredible was how many other filmmakers that we interviewed who knew that who okay. had studied what Spike had done, okay, understood what the lineage it was of that. You know, it's like, I'm self-taught, mm -hmm. you know, I've never taken a film course, I've never taken a photography lesson, you know. I think that's incredible, because you're so talented, I love it. <laughs> well, thank you, you're, you're, making, you're making me blush. <laughs> but it's true, uh, but it just shows, <laughs> like, if you have talent, you have talent. Yeah, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like my... My, the talent that I have, you know, it's like I always say when to, to say that I'm self-taught doesn't mean that I don't have the respect for those that came before. You have to understand the artistry of, of where the things came from before. It's just that I, I'm not wrapped up in the conventions. You know, I don't see um, the restrictions. You know, I, I, I really, I, if I saw the restrictions, we'd never have made this film because to make a film like this it costs a hell of a lot of money mm -hmm. to buy you know rights and licenses and stuff like That's that clips, you but see. you can make a film like this using the law oh. yeah and you can make a film like this by fair dealing or fair trading and as yeah. long as you stay within the law you yes. can do that uh, and we not only stayed within the law and the parameters of how people fair trade their films but we actually found that there were ways in which we could fair trade that were beyond those conventions oh. so we created our own conventions in making this film as well i love that because a lot of the filmmakers and actors in here have a very unconventional way of creating their career because out of necessity so you did the same thing which is yeah i mean and, and that's that's one of the things which you know, we've we've been talking a lot about um, you know the Oscar so white movement um, and you know what that means. You know the exclusion of uh, of of these talented, unconventional filmmakers. You know, um, you know both in front and behind the camera, and you know that exclusion. I believe um, if something isn't if if no change happens. All that will happen is is that uh, I believe that you know a lot of these institutions they'll become obsolete because they'll become obsolete because people want innovation they want change. A film like Get Out defied genre because it was it defied genre. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah? What was it? A comedy, uh, a social documentary, a horror film? You know, what was it? You know, Jordan Peele literally created a new genre with that film. Yeah. 2017 was a pivotal year for black filmmakers, black cinema. Mm -hmm. um, because it was going in cinemas and seeing a predominantly white audience to seeing watching a film that would have traditionally had a predominantly black audience and seen as being a minority film you know and that's really interesting for me because it shows me that audiences are far more sophisticated than the industry give them credit oh, for and audiences absolutely. have been making their choice in terms of the types of films and types of stories that they want to see how they want to see them where they want to see them how they enjoy them and how they they communicate that enjoyment as well Human beings have always been interested in stories about human beings. It's true. It's that simple. Regardless of your ethnicity, your culture, yeah, stories of humans have always touched other humans. I love that. It's beautiful and it's so true. I there's anytime I feel like that writing is coming from a truthful place, that's like the most powerful thing you could do with your craft and it reaches out to audience and it does transcend whatever race you are whatever gender you are because you're right it is a story about the human condition a story about just being a person and that's yeah. what i mean it's, it's like we're sitting in in this beautiful cinema yeah. here um you know at at Ares campus you know um uh, created by by ava duvernay and you know it's like She's collecting a whole range of like-minded people, uh, but those like-minded people have had to create out of necessity. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we haven't had the opportunities that others have had to make um, the films or tell the stories that they, that they want to make. Um, and unless you have organizations like this, which actually allow and empower you to tell your stories and distribute those stories to audiences who want to, you know, who want to hear these stories, then, you know, none of this would exist. Where do you see kind of after this experience, like the future of cinema going? That, that's interesting because I, I think that people are, um, are, are getting worried about, um, you know, the likes of Netflix, for example. Uh, and feeling that it's going to stop people uh, going to the event of, you know, sitting in a darkened room in a theater with other people enjoying something that's going on in a screen and they're just going to sit at home or Netflix and chill. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but I don't think, you know, it's like, I remember people saying that, um, that bookshops were going to, yeah, I'll go die, yeah, yeah. and uh, people would no longer read books because they could read them on a, you Just know, two independent experiences completely. Yeah. So I don't think that the cinema will die. I th I'm hoping that um, the industry wises up to why a film like Moonlight was was a pivotal moment in the evolution of cinema going, um, because. It showed that uh, an independent film can make good box office sense. Absolutely, you know? they can, yeah. Uh, and I think that it should be encouraged to, you know, we should be encouraged to make all sorts of stories. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, as long as uh, we, are, we are making art that appeals to people, uh, we will continue to have cinema. Um, I think that people will continue to go uh, to cinema on dates mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Um, and um, long may that continue. It really doesn't matter where you come from. You, if you want to do it, you, you'll find a way and you could do it. And I, I, yeah, you do, I mean, given the right tools, definitely helps. But. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like uh, if, I, if I knew now mm -hmm. or if I knew back then what I know now I would have been you know making films as part of my artistic repertoire years ago um, 
but there is this thing where people tell you, oh, you need to go to that school yeah, to, to do that, yeah. do that. Is... and you need to know that person in order to do that. And uh, that's not the case at all. Um, if you want to start making films, yeah, and you've got a, um, a smartphone, start making your film. Yeah, like a tangerine all on an uh, iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I always think they tell people that too with writing or anything. I'm like, just start doing put pen to paper. That's the, what separates people from either. They're either going to talk about it or they're going to do it at the end of the day. What advice would you give to maybe a younger generation who want to become the next generation of filmmakers? Oh, the younger generation are giving me advice. Yeah, that's what I look at. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in awe of, uh, of their ability. They... The younger generation, what I love about them is um, they don't procrastinate. Mm -hmm. They don't have the procrastination of my generation. Yeah, I can't do that because yeah. whatever. So I like their, their can-do attitude. Um, I really love that about them. Um, what I would say to them is that um, there, is, there is a saying. It's called art and commerce. Yeah. So... Um, Making your art is one thing, but uh, think about how you're going to get that art out there. Um, in the UK, there's a group of young uh, filmmakers, and what they've been doing is um, they know that they, they will not get distribution for their films. So what they're doing is they go to cinema chains and they buy out cinemas. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so they make their films... Uh, and then they they basically distribute them independently, and they fill a cinema screen. I love that. I mean, my advice to to young people is be entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. uh, find different ways of doing stuff. Um, you know, it's like you've got uh, your friend who works in the bank. Yeah, uh, speak to them about how they can help you finance your film. Yeah? Absolutely. Um, speak to your 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 mate who cuts your hair. Right, to come and do hair on your film. True. Yeah, your friend who's great at doing makeup, um, get her to come and do makeup on your film. Yeah, someone else who sews, get them to come and make the costumes. Yeah, just look at the people around you um, who are good at doing stuff and get them to come in and do it. You know, it's like looking at uh, uh, Ruth Carter. Um, you know, and how she started out uh, and. You know, it's like just getting on to films that Spike Lee did. And then that was her her, her starting point. Yeah. In the beginning, she didn't know what um, a costume designer was. You know, it's like I I didn't know what a... I, to tell you the truth, uh, when, I, when I met Ruth, it was a real honor for me because I had no idea what a costume designer was until I saw um, uh, it was at school days. And I was just like really interested in how did they get that costume and where did that come from? And I literally went through the credits in the end and I was like, mm. oh, they have a costume design. Right, okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. They had that in film. And I kept seeing her name popping up and stuff and just realized that this person was, you know, she was amazing and brilliant. Yeah. She really is, and I'm so, of course she's included in the series, I'm so glad yeah. she is. Um, at, the, at the end of this whole experience, what do you hope that audiences really take away from watching The God Happen? Um, that's a great question. Um, what I hope the audiences take away from watching They've Gotta Have Us is that um, filmmakers are filmmakers, regardless of their color. 